Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. Um, in this video, I have an interview with Chris McCammon from Aptera. And if you guys didn't know, Chris has his own YouTube channel called Virtually Chris here. And um, he used to work at Kama AI. And um, he has this video that he showed me about the first time when he installed OpenPilot, when OpenPilot was very, very early. Uh, in its iteration, and he has it on his, web, in, on his uh, YouTube page, and I'll link this video uh, for you guys to watch. It's a very interesting video. I watched it myself. It's Chris back when he is a um, college student, and uh, he installed OpenPilot into his own car, and this was back when OpenPilot was very, very, you know, quote, beta, and um, ha was very rough, and you had to kind of DIY much of it. And then there was actually even a um, a news a news program that uh, talked about him and his the project that he did. So I'll link both of these videos uh, in the description below, um, and you guys can check it out for yourselves and uh, enjoy this video uh, with uh, Chris talking to us about OpenPilot and and how it's planning on being implemented in the AppTerra. Thanks for joining us, Chris. Of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So um, I think when Aptera announced that Kama AI and Open Pilot is going to be their ADES, I, I think exactly like no one was surprised. <laughs> uh, I, I, I put out a video back in October kind of suggesting that that might be the case. I don't know if you saw it, but I talked about you in there because I know you worked for Kama AI before. Yeah. And and like it was a pretty it was a pretty good solution and you had worked there so i know that you were aware of it and probably you talked to leadership and they, they were probably aware of it even before you got there i'm sure um and um, i'm wondering are you allowed to tell us now how long had you guys been working on that yeah for sure uh we've had open pilot in beta for over eight months uh which okay. is you know in the scheme of things that's a relatively long time but i think leadership always kind of had that idea that open pilot was the the right choice um because it's you know the most efficient way to get autonomy and after vehicles uses not very much power and yeah i mean it's just a very competent system so i think that's always kind of been the idea for the future but i think when i came in here i was like hey i think we could you know come out with this a little sooner we can make smart decisions you know, on our vehicle design now so that, you know, it's ADAS ready and stuff like that. So that's kind of been what I've been championing and that's why I got it in beta. So, so how, how long were you with comma AI? I was there almost two years. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, I mean, it's quite a long time for a startup world, I guess uh -huh. <laughs> that was my first job out of college. Okay. That was your first job out of college. Yeah. H how did you, how did you end up there? I just want to hear the story. Oh man, the story is really crazy i'll I'll send you a video if you want to put footage up but okay. um, i back in i got a 2017 honda civic you know um, okay. and when i got it it had like honda sensing and i was so excited because it was my first car right. um, and then i realized honda sensing was terrible like <laughs> it's just yes. ping pongs it, you know it's not actually right at all. i have a honda clarity it has honda sensing and it's like not great yeah. yeah i was like i have autopilot and i'm like wait no i don't so <laughs> then i was looking up like how do i get can i get something better in this thing and uh, i just so happened to find open pilot and i mean it was really early days they weren't even selling any products back then comma ai um they were you know fully pre-revenue and it was like there were two cars supported the acura ilx and the honda civic my exact one okay. i was like wow this is amazing so I ordered like a circuit board from some guy on the internet. I bought a OnePlus 3T smartphone and uh -huh. 3D printed some stuff at my high school, even though I okay. graduated at that point. Uh -huh. and, you know, put it all together. I soldered for the first time to get the connector hooked up and everything and, and installed OpenPilot in my Honda Civic. So I've been, you know, a part of the OpenPilot community since yeah, 2017. And the company was founded in 2015, really only started to do anything in 2016. So I was like super early days. Uh -huh. um, back then I was like featured on their website. Their website was plain text, if you okay. believe. Uh -huh. And like, it would be like plain text. And then like my video of how to add open pilot to my, you know, civic, and then just like more plain text. So. Oh, okay. You definitely need to send me that link. 
Yes, it's pretty cool. It's like high school me and I was on like the local news at one point. Uh, oh. <laughs> it's a whole fun thing, but essentially that got me in the, you know, comma community and, and at some point I had reached out to them when I was graduating and and because I made videos throughout college about open uh -huh. in my civic and I was like, hey, it'd be, I think I'd be great as like a, you know, head of communications or something and uh, Oh, yeah, they eventually were like, yeah, that's a good idea. I got an interview and and yeah, that was where I moved right out of college to San Diego. Okay. And then you were their like PR person or what? Was yeah. You? So I, yeah, I was head of communications, which, you know, kind of meant a lot of things. So, I mean, it was, you know, all the social media content, making videos and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, very quickly. I transitioned into also being the head of production. So I managed uh, the contractors building comma twos and then comma threes. Um, oh, really? Okay. So I did both all the social media. I actually also coded most of the web updates throughout that period too. So I just did like a bunch of, you know, startup life just doing. How many, um, how many people were working at the comma AI when you were there? Man, probably like 10 or something, not including. Okay. So it was real like, small. Contractors. Yeah. And it's still pretty tiny. Uh -huh. <laughs> They're pretty. Okay you know, lean because they don't have to make a whole vehicle. They just right. make it nice. So they, they, they have a lot of leeway there, which is great. But yeah, I mean, it, it was a great time. So what made you decide to switch over to, because you you came from Kamaya straight to Aptera, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. And I think for me, it was, I really wanted to focus more on making content. And I like, you know, doing videos. I've done videos my whole life. I've been like a YouTuber my whole life. I used to yeah, do my yeah youtubing and blah 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 like right i remember when i first met you life. when i came down there i was like hey yeah you have you have a youtube channel i looked you up yeah <laughs> it's cool yeah so that's kind of like my passion and what i really motivates me and uh, i had just gotten to the point at comma where i was you know doing a lot of production tasks which were fun in their own right but i think i was like man if i can you know do something more related to what i want to do um long term that'd be great for me so you know, no, no bad blood with comma at all, but uh -huh. I, I feel like Aptera it was the best choice I could make, you know, it's a great okay. place. And, and then when did you join Aptera? I forget. It was like, was it a year ago, year and a half ago? Yeah, pretty much like a year and a few weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. So at that point, the, so is, is open pilot in Aptera sort of your doing a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. pretty much like it was always an idea for the future but uh -huh. no one ever had tried open pilot like you know in, in the engineering team and stuff like that um it's funny because chris and steve always had a had bought a comma two at some point like way before i started at aptera and like they okay. had they just hadn't installed it yet so when i okay. when i joined i put in helped steve put in his uh bolt and stuff so uh -huh. it's yeah in a way i think yeah it's pretty much Thanks to me. And then he tried it out and he was like, oh, this works pretty good. He loves it. Yeah. He thinks it's amazing. And I, Isn't, I can't help but agree. I use it every day. The, the, their motto is like dr making driving chill or something like that. Right. Yeah. Make driving chill. And it's, it's a totally different feeling from Tesla autopilot because with autopilot, especially full self-driving, I think it's very, can be very jerky or unpredictable at times. And yeah. The whole philosophy with open pilot is the driver always has a full second to react before the vehicle would deviate from its lane or do anything harsh. Mm -hmm. So it has a lot of smoothing on it. Um, yeah. And it has collaborative steering, which Tesla doesn't have. Uh, uh -huh. if, if you nudge the wheel on a Tesla, you'll kick out of autopilot. But uh -huh. here, if you like want to change your position, you just grab the wheel, nudge it slowly, let go, uh -huh. it moves back over. So it's definitely a lot more chill. Um, I've been in, you know, friends' cars with FSD and it's sometimes can be you know scary because it's like does this randomly I'm like whoa yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pilot, it's a lot more predictable so actually my 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 uh my brother-in-law got a model three and has full self-driving and he like totally believed everything that elon was saying about like yeah. oh this thing will drive itself I'm like dude it, it doesn't drive itself trust me and like watch the thing he's like no 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 it's really good and then yeah. i think he, he he crashed the car I mean, it wasn't bad, but basically it was one of these roads that like goes up a hill and then turns. Yeah. So it doesn't like see the road because it's like it, it's over hill and it turned and there was like, you know, the guardrail and it basically like scraped the guardrail. Ah. <laughs> and that was his Model 3. Oh, that's unfortunate. And then so then after that, he was much more careful about it. But yeah, it like notices like if there's parked cars and stuff, it'll like try like jerk out of the way thinking like the parked car is going to pull out and stuff. And so, um, 
yeah, it, the, he definitely quickly realized it's not, it's not full self-driving. Right. Exactly. <laughs> it's, yeah. uh, These systems yeah. are all level two, you know, so right. level two, I think it's easy to be like, oh my gosh, I don't, I don't trust that thing or whatever. But the, the whole point with level two is that you're always in control, full control of the vehicle. You're fully liable for everything your vehicle's doing. And I mean, with open pilot, especially the collaboration is really, really nice. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I I did a road trip from you know Maine with my now wife all the way from like you know Maine to San Diego and congratulations, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, like over six months married or something crazy like awesome. that. Awesome. Um, but uh, you know, we did that road trip and I I didn't really drive at all. It's probably like ninety eight percent on open pilot, so uh -huh. it's yeah, a so huge, you're like uh, you're driving, right? you're engaged, but you just don't have to. You 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 it's you're like less stressed out about it. Yeah, I mean, think about especially in like, you know, stop and go traffic, but even not like how many micro adjustments you make to the wheel, like every minute and mm -hmm. you go from the gas to the brake, like you're always yeah. doing some decisions, even if you're not consciously aware. So it takes yeah. all that away. And it just says like, you know, is this a safe place I'm driving right now? If someone's like, you know, zooming out in front of me, I'm going to probably take over, but like, it's very predictable for me, like having used open pilot for so long, like, okay, like, uh -huh. I'm yeah, it just takes that whole load away. So I really like that. Right. I mean, just I some... living in, in Southern California, if if a car just handled like traffic well, that would just be great. And I think many systems handle traffic well. So Open Pilot has very little problems with stop and go traffic, right? Oh yeah, yeah, it's super great. I actually brought some some history for you if you want to see it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um. So for a while, Kama used to sell this. It's called the Eon or this is the Eon Gold, but like this is literally a smartphone in a 3D printed case. So this is like where Open Pilot started as a product, um, uh -huh. was literally a smartphone with a heat sink and a fan. And I, I just think it's cool because this comes from hacker culture, um, uh -huh. like, you know, that open source community that just wants to make things awesome. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, from then they've, you know, graduated to this, which is fully custom hardware, you know, really reliable OLED screen, like, really good cameras, really good. Uh, is that a comma three stuff. that you're holding? Yeah, this is a comma three. This is what was in beta. Uh, this is the same one in beta, but okay. um, yeah, just, it's just cool to see like over time, I feel like it's the right way to build a product as you iterate on it over time. So you uh -huh. start with the easiest thing to get out, you improve it, you, you know, improve reliability over time, improve the software over time. So open pilots like miles and miles better than it ever was when I first had it in my Civic. It's incredible. Oh. You know, it's like you've, you've noticed the difference. Yeah. I mean, it, it was like literally, cause I was so early on, it was like barely usable to now, mm -hmm. like I use it all the time. And like in the experimental mode, which I use all the time, it stops at red lights and stop signs. And mm -hmm. that's all stuff that's, you know, been added in the past few years. So okay, it's really cool so to see. That kind of brings up another topic. Like, um, open pilot is technically experimental software, right? And you, you could say that, yeah. And the way that comma AI gets around it is that they sell the device, the comma three device, but it doesn't come loaded with open pilot, correct? Yes, yeah, that's correct. You have to load open pilot yourself and it's a considered a dev kit, and you're yeah. you're like developing you're like sort of helping develop the software or something. And it's, yeah, and it's I a funny way they word it. <laughs> and I heard it's done for liability reasons. Can you, can yeah. you talk to us a little bit about that? Absolutely. Yeah. So I think especially early on in their development of open pilot, like it was very much a development kind of software and, and, you know, they didn't have all the testing and validation they have now, which is great. So I think there's going to be a point here in the future where you see that comma ships devices with open pilot because it just makes sense. It's the easiest thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially what installing open pilot is, is kind of like how you, you know, have to accept the terms to use FSD. Like there's all these, like if you read the FSD terms, they're, you know, as crazy as installing open pilot terms. So I think, you know, there's some interim stage, but what Aptera is able to do is, you know, validate this software and, and, uh, you know, eventually with the goal of shipping it with our vehicles, um, because we can, you know, validate, you don't, you don't have to validate that the machine learning model is like perfect in every scenario. What you have to validate is that, uh, you know, you can collaboratively steer, you can take over at any time. These are the things that 
make an ADAS system uh, you know, safe to use. So that's that's what we can validate as Aptera. Okay. And so is the plan for Aptera to have OpenPilot installed as a software piece? Yeah, so I think there's a few, you know, stages of development and it depends on like how where you are in the Aptera community. If you're like a really cool DIY guy, you like to do this stuff like probably like I do and like probably most of your viewers do. Uh -huh. Or if you're very much, you know, hands off and and want a system that just comes installed. Right. Um, the the goal is, you know, as soon as possible to have this open pilot capable vehicle or just ADAS in general where, you know, really enthusiastic customers, let's say could buy a comma three and like slap it in there and, and try it out and kind of be on the bleeding edge. And I mean, okay. obviously we'd verify that the software is safe in that case. Uh -huh. um, and then there's the end goal, which is yeah, fully integrated ADAS that looks, you know, fully implemented and is, is installed properly. So that's, okay. that's the North star that we're working towards. Yeah. Okay. So probably in the launch editions, it's just going to be ADAS capable. It's gonna like it'll be like what what, am I, what I want to say. It's gonna work with comma three if you buy it. That's the goal, and it probably won't even be you know software won't be written at the beginning of production or anything like that. But the, there's a lot of validation to be done on our end. You know when we have our production intent vehicle and we can drive it around and test it, make sure the steering column is perfect for open pilot, everything's tuned properly, and that's you know the kind of things that we're discussing now is just making sure that everything's lined up for a vehicle that's you know open pilot capable as soon as possible, uh, hopefully right away. But these are things that just need so much validation to confirm. So right, stuff we're gonna because I mean out. like open pilot works with other cars that are like com completely they're not even trying to make it open pilot compatible right yeah yeah they're just putting it out there is like, a cool thing like the hondas and the hyundais and stuff like that right but yeah what so open pilot capable for our vehicle just means you know that you can actuate the steering you can actuate the brakes and acceleration and you know most of these things are very easy with the alafe motors we can you know actuate those however we want we have uh, a lot of different options around this stuff, but it's just, yeah, validating all these systems, making sure they work well together um, and routing the proper cables to the proper place for the future. So the idea for long term is that, you know, there's a, a trim piece that's kind of right here near the rearview mirror that you'd be able to snap off and snap on the, you know, official Aptera hardware, let's say, if it comes down the line in the next few years. So that's like that's a, sort of a replacement for the rearview mirror that becomes the... The, basically a comma three yeah basically something like that um yeah. so that's something you know we haven't spent any development resources on because we know it's you know possible and we want to you know get the vehicles out in the world first but mm -hmm. i'm working to make sure that they're capable for the future because uh it'd be really cool to just you know slap snap it in or have you know yeah. server tech snap it in later on and uh -huh. and you get really great autonomy that implements properly so that's kind of the end goal and and yeah that's why you know i thought we could, should announce it now because it's uh you know definitely something on the plan for the future right. now can you tell us like the launch editions will they work with comma three yeah so it's gonna depend on a few validation steps that we're going to be doing um yeah. but the overall goal is to make it as easy as possible so whether it's that you have to bring it into Aptera for a few tweaks or something like that. Like we're still determining, um, wow. working with all the zones to make sure it's you know super easy for us to do that. Uh -huh. um, but as far as I'm seeing it, my line of sight is is yes that launch okay. editions will work with it. Um, that's that's the plan. For okay. Me. All right. Um, and that's kind of funny because you were telling me that you're now on the ADAS, you know, lead team. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is funny because you kind of joined Aptera to do mostly content creation and you got you got sucked back into some engineering production type stuff. Yeah, no, it's great because I, I've always been passionate for open pilot, even though I left Kama. I think it's a fantastic product. And that's what you'll find if you use it yourself is you'll be like, man, I don't ever want to drive a vehicle without this in it. Like it's it's game changing, you know, and I think a lot of people here at Aptera have, you know, Teslas and they're like, man, we really should have something like that or have a line of sight to something like that. And it's just the the right way to do it. You know, there's so many companies burning hundreds of millions, but you have this team of 10 or so in San Diego that's making something comparable um, right. to autopilot. It's pretty remarkable. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm friends oh, with you. a lot of engineers at, you know, comma too. And uh, yeah, it's just cool to see them work. They're really great. Do you know how, um, like the nuts and bolts of how like open pilot, how, how, how do they work? How do they figure out where to go, where the, where to put the car and stuff? What do you mean by that? Like, how do like, you... like, is it like algorithm? Like I see this and then I turn here yeah. or do, do, do they just feed in a bunch of information from people driving around and say like, oh, just drive like that. And it's like, it's like kind of like machine learning. This might blow your mind, but it's, it's pretty remarkable, even more than um, what Tesla is doing in, in my eyes. What Kama does is it's called an end-to-end -end, um, driving model. So on one end, you have literally raw images from these sensors, the two front facing cameras that goes into the machine learning model or into the training set. Mm -hmm. And then that model trains on, you know, 50 plus million miles of driving. Mm -hmm. And the output is a path with a desired acceleration or deceleration at any point in time. So what you get is a system that adapts to you know pretty much every road scenario possible um, without having to hard code anything. It's it's all baked into this insanely complex model that Kama develops. Um, mm. So it's, you know, Tesla has a team of thousands of labelers, right? They're labeling right. cars, they're labeling signs, they're labeling road markings. Um, Kama has a very basic version of that just to localize where that uh, where the vehicle is in 3D space. But besides that, it's training on raw images and outputting path. So you get, uh, you know, slow down for speed bumps, you get red lights and stop signs, and none of this is hard coded at all. It's all just learning how humans drive. So mm -hmm. it's pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, because I was, I was watching a bunch of comma, um, you know, some of their official videos and their dev, you know, the, their uh, engineers talking about it. And I, and I just saw that like, yeah, what they don't do is they don't like segment the data and label it. They don't label like that's a pedestrian, that's a dog, that's a bicycle, that's a, um, which intuitively seems like the way to do it. And I think that's what like Tesla and a bunch of other self-driving companies are doing, but, uh, but open pilots not doing that. It's just skipping that and going straight to like, we don't, we don't care what the label of it is. We just know that like, is that something we can drive over or or like a speed bump, or is it something we need to avoid? Like, a yeah, pedestrian? exactly. You think about how humans or how you would drive on the road, right? Like something jumps out in front of you, you don't care if it's a, you know, like a box or an animal, like you just are like, whoa, something's jumping out in front of me. So that's how open pilot acts. It's not like trying to figure out exactly what that thing is and using a bunch of compute to calculate what that is. It's like some, there's something in front of you, man. Like you gotta slow down. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot more human centric and you know you just think humans can drive like if you had a vr headset right now and you were you know with human resolution and you were looking at a car you were in a driver's seat of a car you could drive the car like all with vision like that's how humans are so that's what's cool with open pilot is it's you know the same and and using sensors to yeah just take in you know photons and yeah i know where to drive so yeah it's I think it's really cool for me because I, I knew so much about it and it's cool to like tell people about it in the office and give them rides and stuff. And they're like, wow, this is incredible that this is, is even real. I'm like, yeah, I know. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think, um, I think it's, uh, like cool that, uh, they, they did that without all the segmenting. Yeah. And, um, I, 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 th I thought that was a very unique approach to, to handling it. Now, do you know, like, does it handle things jumping out in front of it? Like one of the things that open pilots supposed to not do is make sudden movements, right? Right. But certain things require sudden movements. Yeah. Like, so, you know, like something jumping, like a deer jumping out ahead of you or something like that. Right. In those cases, um, open pilot does not make, a, like it doesn't slam on the brakes or anything like that, right? So it would it would slam on the brakes as hard as the, vehicle lets you or the yeah the safety code lets you and then it would throw a red alert to like hey like you know there's something in front it would beep really loud so you, wow. you do get that you know alertness um and you get forward collision warning standard too um uh -huh. Kama's working on um advanced you know automatic emergency braking as well for those kind of instances in the future and yeah. i think the roadmaps kind of align really well to you know when aptera is in the world when 
um, we're ready to ship open pilot with Aptera vehicles. And when Kama has all these features developed, it kind of just like all works out perfectly where we'll, you know, hopefully be launching with a lot, you know, more um, features than, than what is available today. So you can have like a forward looking outlook on this stuff. And um, they've already done a really cool thing. I suggest you check it out. Um, it's an article where they analyzed um, the Honda systems, AEB auto emergency braking versus uh -huh. Pilot auto emergency braking and uh, or like when open pilot would break and there's so many false positives like in most production cars it's just yeah. insane where they yeah. just break for you know I mean that's had to happen in my Civic it just like broke for a manhole cover and I'm like whoa what was that yeah uh, so because no, and like on twisty roads when cars yeah. are coming towards you um on, yeah, on like all the time, roads, you know. it beeps all the time you know and I'm like no 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 that guy's like yeah that is, is gonna stay in his lane or at least you hope he's gonna stay in his lane i know <laughs> so you know you know what i mean because it's all those honda systems do that yeah like because i never uh, thought about it i'm like when it started beeping at me i'm like it is true if that guy does not stay in his lane we're in trouble <laughs> that's true <laughs> but yeah it's cool because they have the data they know when oem systems break like every other car systems break and then they know when people actually break for things that you know could happen because they uh -huh can they record all the data so right i mean the the knowledge and information that comma has is is vast it's more than any other oem has like toyota couldn't tell you you know if they have false positives or not because they don't get the data back but comma gets all the data and can train on it so so all the comma devices are like connected to the cloud and send back information yeah basically and it's something you know it's open source software so depending on if you like that or not, you can totally disable, you know, the data collection mm -hmm. or uh, already like you opt in to have driver uh, monitoring camera uploaded to the cloud. So that's mm -hmm. the opt in thing. But there's so many, yeah, so many, you know, users out there already, thousands of users that have this in their vehicles and have been using it every day. So there's just a vast amount of data and they can pull segments from many of these devices. They all ship with SIM cards that are activated. So. It's pretty pretty great. Um, they have, probably have the second biggest fleet outside of Tesla of mm -hmm. semi-autonomous vehicles. Right, and I think that's a great point because I think, like for me, I I personally I don't care. Like I I want the self drive. I I want the uh, driver assistance, and I don't mind sending the data to them. But a lot of people are like, I don't want the car driving for me. I want to drive my own car. I don't want anyone monitoring where I'm going, what I'm doing, what I'm seeing, anything like that. And it's good to know that like you can turn that off. And also that it's like an option, like it's a modular thing that like you could just remove the thing and then you don't have to ever worry about that kind of stuff if you don't want it. Yeah, totally. It's it's really kind of cool because, you know, in most cars, if you like unplug your lane keep camera, you get a bunch of warnings and stuff. Uh, for our vehicle, if there's nothing plugged in, we're just not going to say that on the dash that it has, you know, driver assistance. And if you plug it in, then suddenly your Aptera has driver assistance. So it's a very you know, clear system, either you have it or you don't. And like, you could literally just unplug it and like now the Aptera acts as if it doesn't have it. So mm -hmm. it's pretty cool in that way. But yeah, people don't understand too, like you engage it like cruise control. So you press set if you want to use it. If you're in a road where you don't want to use it, just don't press set and like don't use cruise control. It's kind of the same as the thinking for any general dumb cruise control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, it's something that I've wanted to install on my own car. But I think like the clarity doesn't have um, there's like it's it's not it's not a plug and play one. It's one of these things that you have to kind of like mess with it. And yeah. I've I've heard that it's a little um, finicky about the positioning of the device. Is that true or not really anymore? That used to be true, and you know I can help you if you want to get the right hardware for your clarity. Um, okay, you'd think it's pretty cool, but uh, yeah, no, that's. Like it's pretty remarkable. The Teslas, for example, or like, well, let's, we'll start with an OEM, like a general, like Honda or Toyota. Like, if you move that camera, or like if you get, you know, your windshield replaced, you have to calibrate that thing, and yes. you know, it costs thousands of dollars, and it's ridiculous. Yes. Um, with Teslas, you have to drive for like two hours ish, uh -huh. sometimes less, sometimes more, to get all these cameras aligned because they have so many. Uh -huh. um, Open Pilot calibrates in like thirty seconds, no matter. As long as you don't have it like you know skewed by 30 degrees as long as it's somewhere in the general middle and near the top like it it calibrates in like 30 seconds so okay it's it's so it's, it's much better it's better okay <laughs> yeah because yeah. i i actually i actually got my windshield replaced on the clarity and the ada system does not work anymore 
Yeah, it's just so silly. <laughs> yeah. And it's probably because it's off by like two millimeters or something. Yeah. yeah it, it, it doesn't work anymore. So yeah, I, I might take you up on that. Yeah, I might you, go buy you know one and, like, um, and, uh, and try yeah, it out. No, it's, it's an exciting future. And, and I just really wanted to kind of make our intentions clear because it's so obvious internally that this is our future. And this is like what we should build into Aptera vehicles. It's the most efficient, cost-effective, best, you know, self-driving or, you know, level two autonomy other than Tesla. So, um, well, I guess it depends how, how you say it, right? Because like, if you don't want something that's jerky and stuff, then this is the best. That's oh. why Consumer Reports rated number one, because it has really good driver monitoring, whereas Tesla doesn't really. Um, but in terms of like pure functionality, it's probably still, you know, one year behind Tesla, something mm -hmm. like that. But right. it's insurmountable in the timeline of autonomous vehicles, you know, I feel like right. Ama could really catch up to Tesla in a lot of ways. And in the future, there'll be more features that roll out. So uh, yeah, it's exciting. We're still working out exactly when and we'll communicate it to everybody and, you know, make it very transparent before anyone gets, you know, vehicle delivery. But the goal is as soon as possible, hopefully at the start of production, but there's just so many inner workings with this right. people that a we're not going to delay production for anything, you know, if, if if there's like 100 vehicles that doesn't work with that need to be retrofitted later, that's okay. Um, as long as, you know, we get vehicles out to people and those people would be notified and if they'd be okay with a vehicle without ADAS. But I think for the vast, vast majority of customers, it's going to be plug and play. So that's, I mean, it's going to happen pretty quickly or okay. right away. Yeah. Uh, here's another question I had about the open pilot um, dev device. Um, so it only has forward looking cameras, right? Yeah. How does it handle lane changes? Yeah. So or it does it do lane changes. It it does assisted lane changes, which are is what Tesla did for a while too before they had their side cameras. So what that means is you put on the blinker when it's safe, you you check yourself or you know, you look at our vision system when it's safe, you mm -hmm. nudge the wheel and then it will make the lane change automatically from that point on. Uh -huh. um, Open Pilot does have that driver camera, so uh -huh. technically it can see it somewhat out the sides, like to make sure there's no cars immediately to your left or right. Okay. Um, I think the, again, that goal for Aptera in the future is that you tie into those vision assist cameras and it all becomes one unified system. And I, I could see that happening down the line. Okay. But that would be a total change to their, to their system then, because their system doesn't work with any rear view cameras, but Aptera has a side rear view camera and it right. could input that data into that, but that would require like a, a completely different thing. Right. Yeah. So how their, how their system works with most vehicles is uh, it will block on, you know, blind spot or like any, any side sensor. So, I mean, it interfaces with a bunch of different car features. Some cars have okay. side radar, some have, so you know, sonar. So depending on what your vehicle has, it will interface with that. So uh, okay. there's definitely a future where our vision system outputs if it's safe to make a lane change or not and sends that uh -huh. to the pilot. So okay. that we can do that with cameras. I could see that happening. Okay. Now, is this, is this uh, between Aptera and Kama, is it kind of a one-way collaboration as in like Aptera has decided like this is what we're going to do and they're, you're using it because it's kind of open source and easy to plug in? or is comma AI like aware of this and like collaborating on their end too? Cause it kind of sounded like from the quick interview they did with George at uh, CES, he's like, no, we don't, we don't work with anyone. Like we just, we just build this thing. And like, if they want to use it, great. If they don't fine. Yeah. <laughs> he's a fun guy. He's an interesting guy. So that's definitely true. That's how comma operates is like, if you want to work with comma, then that means like, make your vehicle compatible. It's, it's uh -huh. not a hard tasks, you know, and uh -huh. especially for all these OEMs that already have systems, like they could just switch to open pilot, no problem. Uh -huh. So we're definitely following in like what comma would ideally want, you know, an automaker to, to do to implement open pilot. But I think you'll probably see once, you know, we're closer to production once, you know, they, we have demos and stuff. I, I could see some collaboration at that point. I think, uh, that's definitely something possible, but I'd have to talk to George in the future. And right. I, could, I could see things happening once, you know, we have vehicles on the road, especially they're going to be like, oh man, we could integrate with you guys or we could add more cameras and like make yeah. it totally, you know, unified. So there's a lot of possibilities in the future. 
I'm okay. hopeful. Yeah. All right. All right. Hey, great. Thanks for your time, Chris. It, it was it was fun talking to you, and thanks for all the information about Open Pilot. And uh, send me that link to that video that you made when you were in high school for sure. We'll, yeah. Uh, we'll kind of edit that into this thing. <laughs> Sounds <And> good. <laughs> if I get a comma yeah. comma three, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you up for some information on how to install the thing. Yeah, it's been a fun journey. It's just so life is so weird, right? Like you go to college for one thing, you start at a company and now I'm implementing the previous company's thing into this company. It's like, whoa. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. yeah, all these Aptera owners are gonna really, really love this. I, I guarantee it because I use it every day. It's fantastic. So yeah, I right think, choice. I think when people you know saw that open pilot was a possibility and a likely possibility, most people were very happy with that. They were like, oh yeah, that that seems like totally the right decision. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's exciting. And, and yeah, it doesn't take away from any, you know, it's, it's just, it's me. So it doesn't take away from other, you know, zones or the production timeline or anything like that. Like it's just a nice added feature that we get to do since I work here and I, you know, can help us make the right decisions along the way. So really exciting. All right. All right. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Steve.